Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we are back in the point lonesome swamp deep in the oasis of freedom after our trip into the swamp and uh, it is now Monday evening, January 31st, 2022, and guys, we might be ready to make history on Collapse Chronicles. This is going to be a two-part and possibly even a three-part uh, video where I am going to bring to you what I honestly believe is one of the single most spot-on analyses of the state of not so much the planet of this global culture uh, that I have heard since probably since listening to Terence McKenna's uh, masterpiece culture is not your friend and I want to think so I'm gonna this will be divided up into two or three parts over the next two or three days this will be part one, and I want to thank alert listener R.C. R.C. for sending me this, this unbelievably spot-on analysis of uh, the state of the planet. And then after I finish this, we're going to look at another uh, excellent uh, essay that R.C. sent me. But we're going to go over to medium.com where I've visited before and hear from this fellow named Eric Rittenberry, E-R-I-K Rittenberry. Never heard of this man. And this is what gets me. I mean, now I've been down here in this rabbit hole for how many years? Never heard of this man. And don't know anything about him. Uh... But uh, maybe at the end of this, uh, th this absolutely monumental work, uh, we will find out a little more about this. Eric claims this is a 13-minute read. I guess Eric is a speed reader. But he has titled this, <clears throat> Civilization is Flinging Itself to Pieces. Stand Back. And he has many quotes uh, all peppered throughout here. So he kicks this masterpiece off with a quote from whoever Jonas Mekas, M-E-K-A-S, never heard of Jonas. This is to sum up uh, the leadoff quote to this uh, opera quote. In the very end, Civilizations perish because they listen to their politicians and not to their poets. And I believe that Eric is also a poet and maybe we'll get to hear some of his poetry. But we're going to listen to some of his prose and there might be some F-bombs. And anyway, uh, I'm just going to plow ahead. I'm going to try not to break in too often. Uh, you go, Brother Eric Rittenberry. Take it away. <clears throat> it's mostly all horse shit. This profane pageantry of idiocy that we call contemporary society. If you're being honest with yourself, you know it. You see it all around. Don't lie. The nine to five conniving insurance companies, inept institutions, outrage addicts, sensitivity training, soap opera politics, celebrity worship, 24 hour news cycles, sound bites, mass consumerism, Twitter wars, identity labels, big pharma, crystal healing, widespread obesity, scripted headlines and press releases, morning talk shows, the Billboard Hot 100, 
sterile architecture, out of control debt, rampant inflation, constant surveillance, Chris Cuomo, big tech censorship, soulless suburbia, reality shows, Instagram models, participation trophies, Hallmark cards, unceasing extended warranty phone calls, endless advertising and propaganda, the war on drugs, food additives, fact checkers, internet spiritual gurus, <clears throat> ill-written self-help books, innumerable diets and fashion fads, the hustle and grind, emotional support animals, emotional support animals, horoscopes, empaths, and influencers, safe spaces, NPR, etc. What a shit show of spectacle we have created for ourselves, huh? A frivolous spectacle in a frivolous spectacle intentionally designed to keep us tense, fearful, divided, mindlessly busy, distracted, and laughably dumb. A spectacle designed, in the words of Vance Packard, quote, to make us wasteful, debt-ridden, permanently disconnected individuals, close quote. A spectacle that has dangerously severed us from each other and from the full richness of this brief, yet beautiful life. It was the poet Jim Harrison who once said, quote, the danger of civilization, of course, is that you will piss away your life on nonsense, close quote. Indeed, Jim, I often wonder if those God-fearing pilgrims who sailed over to this once unspoiled land would have reconsidered their hostility against the natives and against nature itself if they knew in advance what we would end up erecting this glittering cathedral of nonsense. Hell, we have ravaged the countryside, paved over and through the mountains, meadows, coastlines, and valleys to build mega malls, quick marts, high-rise buildings, resorts, banks, fast food joints, and countless pantheons of half-baked amusement. And we have dotted the land with prisons, barbed wire fences, rehab centers, hospitals, and madhouses to deal with civilizations ill-adapted. What a horror show. In the words of historian Morris Berman, who I have uh, interviewed on Collapse Chronicles, if you would like to go find my interview with Morris Berman, in the words of Morris Berman, quote, We live in a collective adrenaline rush, a world of endless promotional, promotional commercial bullshit that makes a deep systemic emptiness the spiritual equivalent of asthma, close quote. <clears throat> I read once about this old Indian sage many years ago who once made a visit to that overpriced little fairy tale place we call Disneyland. Afterward, he simply remarked, quote, there must be very little joy in a culture which needs to have that much fun, close quote. If you have not quite noticed yet, 
I seem to harbor this perennial, albeit healthy, discontent with the fallen world, this hollow world of lies and strife and superfluous noise, a world where so many of us live in opposition to our essence. In spite of the harsh t tone though, I'm not bitter by any means or nihilistic, I promise, and I am not hell-bent on changing anything on a systemic level. It's futile. Yes. I write for the solitary individual out there who might have a sense that something is deeply off for those who are looking for something a little deeper beyond this charade. I write to express what I see around me with my imperfect eyes. That's it. I hold no nostalgia for what could have been. And apart from a radical change of consciousness and a reconnection to the elemental, there are no sweeping solutions. It's too late for solutions. As Berman put it, quote, long ago Americans bet on the wrong horse and they are now unable to change horses in midstream, close quote, close quote. Or as the great Tom Robbins so bluntly wrote, Quote, society in general maintains such a vested interest in its cozy habits and solidified belief systems that it had rather die or kill than entertain change. Close quote. It is what it is, as they say. It doesn't take a keen mind to discern the obvious, though. Civilization, or what's left of it, is dangling on a tiny thread over a shadowy abyss. Many great writers and thinkers of the past saw the writing on the wall early on. Over a hundred years ago, Oswald Spengler wrote his famous work, The Decline of the West, in 1918. His thesis, all civilizations rise, flourish for a short while, and decline in a cyclical pattern. Quoting uh, Oswald Spengler, quote, through money, Democracy becomes its own destroyer after money has destroyed intellect." Close quote. It was the great Ralph Waldo Emerson who bleakly predicted that, quote, the end of the human race will be that it will eventually die of too much civilization close quote, and the Genevan philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who defined civilization as, quote, a hopeless race to discover remedies for the evils it produces. Novelist Ray Bradbury wrote that our, quote, civilization is flinging itself to pieces. Stand back from the centrifuge Close quote. And it was that old Kentucky poet, Wendell Berry, who once said, quote, You can best serve civilization by being against what usually passes for it. Close quote. Today, the boundaries between true and false, beauty and grotesque, sacred and profane, real and unreal, have all but disintegrated. We are ruled and managed by the least among us 
and we are greatly divided over trivial issues. I think we all know the trivial issues that we are letting ourselves be greatly divided, uh, greatly dividing us as we are being ruled and managed by the least among us. Yep. Over half the population is medicated and chronically ill. Suicide and numerous mental and physiological diseases are rapidly rising. And finally, one piece of good news, fertility rates are plummeting right along with testosterone rates in men. Now obviously Eric did not see fertility rates plummeting uh, as a good thing, but I just could not resist breaking in <clears throat> back to reality. History has been blotted out or misconstrued to appease the aseptic sensibilities of the feeble-minded. The groggy youth these days hardly know who Plato or Moses is, let alone the great Enlightenment thinkers. The prominent figures of history have been expunged. The lessons of history abandoned. Self-harm, suicide, anxiety, and heavy drug use are rampant among teens. Violence, homicide, addiction, apathy, and crippling fear. Hmm crippling fear plague our crumbling cities. The immense gap between the rich and poor is continuously expanding. The government and almost all of our major institutions have become fraudulent, domineering, over-politicized, criminally incompetent organizations that can no longer be fully trusted, and I knew it was only a matter of time before we got to culture is not your friend. Mm -hmm. As Terence McKenna reminded us, quote, this culture is a perversion. It fetishizes objects, creates consumer mania, it preaches endless forms of false happiness, endless forms of false understanding in the form of squirrely religions and silly cults. It invites people to diminish themselves and dehumanize themselves by behaving like machines. Close quote. Amen, Brother Terence. <clears throat> years and years of over-civilized living, we are what became of it. Stifled creatures, culprits of our own maladies, well-fed and comfortable, yet soggy in flesh and soul, digitally connected, yet lonelier than ever perched upon pedestals of presumptuous virtue, nourishing a fierce denial of our own mortality by accessorizing our lives with labels, status, pills, and needless shit while gunning our new unaffordable sports car down the sad streets of America bought on a seven-year loan. This is the modern era, a time when we tend to look for a sense of significance via social media, shopping centers, mindless entertainment, and prescription drugs rather than in the garden of our own souls. Rootless beings with a sustained devotion 
to the artificial and inauthentic, good folks devoid of a conscious life beyond the materialistic charade, wrote the great English poet William Wordsworth, getting and spending we lay waste our powers. Close quote. And am I, let's do one more chapterette here and then we'll finish this out in part two. Back to Eric. Make sure this battery hasn't run out. <clears throat> Today, mental health problems are the leading cause of disabilities. Is it any wonder the numbers are rising at an alarming rate given the superficial, soul-sucking way of life we have created for ourselves in the modern world? An estimated 40 million Americans are now taking psychiatric drugs. According to one study, quote, 35% of young people aged 12 to 25 said they had taken a prescribed psychoactive drug in the past year. We have now reached a point when more people are dying from psychiatric drugs than heroin. Fentanyl overdoses are the leading cause of death for Americans aged 18 to 45. Opioid overdoses are widespread and worsening. Perusing the internet for this article, I was completely stunned to learn that many preschoolers are already taking antidepressants. What the fuck is happening? There is an immense void in the modern day soul that we are all desperately longing to fill. Are we merely the inevitable byproduct turned out by a society that is so heavily dominated by mass media, large corporations, and technology? How much of the neurological and emotional fallout that we see in contemporary society can be contributed to our drug-induced screen time lifestyles. Mounting evidence is showing how constantly staring into screens changes the brain in extremely negative ways. One study, and he has links to all of these things that he talks about, one study revealed that, quote, hours of daily screen time were associated with lower psychological well-being, including less curiosity, lower self-control, more distractibility, more difficulty making friends, less emotional stability, being more difficult to care for, and inability to finish tasks. Close quote. Again, in the words of Berman, quote, screens, screens are generating the emptiest people in the history of the world, and there is no way for these folks to get outside themselves and perceive this. Close quote. The brave new world that we find ourselves in seems to be completely rewiring who we are on a deep, fundamental level, and it is not good. One cannot help be rem but be reminded of Aldous Huxley's disturbing mid-20th century prediction, quote, quoting Huxley, quote, there will be in the next generation or so, meaning now, a pharmacological method of making people love their servitude and producing dictatorship without tears, so to speak, producing a kind of painless 
concentration camp for entire societies so that people will in fact have their liberties taken away from them but will rather enjoy it because they will be distracted from any desire to rebel by propaganda or brainwashing or brainwashing enhanced by pharmacological methods. And this seems to be the final revolution. Close quote. And we're going to wrap up with Aldous Huxley for part one and come back in part two quoting Lewis Mumford. But uh, amen, brother Eric Rittenberry. You go, brother, and uh, we will come back on Tuesday, February 1st with part two and maybe even a part three, although I think I'll wrap it up tomorrow and then we'll get to the next excellent uh, essay that RC sent me. But anyway, I'm going to go uh, upload this and I will see you back tomorrow for part two. Bye, guys. Little dog, that's only part one. I hate to tell you.